Hey, I know it's December, but I figure better late than never. Uh, my husband says that I shouldn't even bother doing this, but I don't care I'm doing it because I participated in some readathons and the 31 Days of Horror, and I just want to share what I did during that. This is part one because 31 days is a lot, so I wanted to break it down. I wanted to do the 31 Days of Horror, which was a challenge from The Hag Reads, and I will put her link to her channel in the description box below. I participated in the Spookathon, which was from Books and La La. I'll put her link down there. And Becky Bookworm, I'll put her link. She had the Spooky Reading Challenge, and so I kind of like put all these together, you know? Um, some of the things that I did they fell into each category. So I knew that I couldn't read 31 books in October, so I changed it up. I watched movies, I watched Halloween specials, I watched different videos, I read short stories, I read full-length novels. So here's my part one. I think I'll do uh, October 1st through the 15th for part one. So, for October the 1st, I watched the sci-fi horror Armed Response. I watched it simply because Seth Rollins was in it, and I just think he's so fine. I can't stand Anne Heche. She was in it. The acting really wasn't all that great. It wasn't all that great of a movie. The characters were very unlikable. But I watched it anyway. So that was what I watched on October the 1st. October the 2nd, and again, these are part of the 31 Days of Horror. I watched the movie The Bloodlands, was, which was just your typical couple moves into a foreclosed house and gets terrorized by people in, wait for it, pig masks. Eh, whatever. It was okay, but it wasn't scary. Now, for October the 3rd, I watched Episode 4 of American Horror Story Cult. This season is the first season where it doesn't have anything to do with the supernatural. You know, I didn't really like this season. Not because it wasn't supernatural, but because the story was just annoying and very, very stressful. It had to do with politics and things that are going on today, and I just, I don't, uh, I don't care for that. Okay, for the fourth, I finished the book, The Siren Chronicles, book one, which I got. It's an e-book, and Gra Entertainment Incorporated and the author Douglas Sloan uh, let me read a copy for free for the purposes of reviewing it. And you can see my review in Goodreads, and I'll put the link to Goodreads down below, too. It was, it was all right. Uh... It was about some mermaids, and they had to come back uh, to the land, and there was a disaster going on because an old enemy had taken over a company and was doing things to harm the oceans and harm the people that live where the sirens lived, and it was just your basic romance adventure, but there were scary parts in it. Uh, the bad guys, quote-unquote, were these uh, nasty, nasty creatures, and the way they were described, it was pretty scary. So that's why I included that in the 31 Days of Horror. So on October 5th, I watched Bound to Vengeance, which was pretty good. It was a good movie. Uh, it was about these, this guy who was abducting these women, and one of the women manages to escape. And she forces the guy to take her to the other women so that she can release the other women. And she really kicks his ass. It was interesting. Um, on the 6th, October the 6th, I watched The Legend of Hell House, which is the movie based on Richard Matheson's classic. Uh, had Roddy McDowell in it. I liked it. It's from the early 70s, the very early 70s, and it had some creepy scares in it. It's basically all about this house that's haunted by the guy that owned it and how he's terrorizing the people in there that are uh, investigating it. 
Okay, for October the 7th, I finished the book The Deceived, and Proving Press and the author E.C. Fisher let me read a copy of it, an ebook to review, and again, I have that review in Goodreads. This was a movie about the idea about Satan taking over heaven, and he was pulling the strings, and he was the one that wrote the Bible, and he was deceiving the people on earth, and the people on earth are living in shelters because there's been nothing but horror and terror and war. And it's about Archangel Michael coming down and leading them to, I guess he was leading them to find some other angels to bring about peace. I mean, that's what I picked up from that. I mean, it, this was really, I mean, it was all right. I liked it, and the demons in it were really scary, but I didn't, like, think it was awesome or wonderful or anything like that. Um, it was just your typical story where a group of people, it kind of reminded me of The Stand, a group of people are, you know, traveling around to try to find people that, you know, not people, but like angels that are missing and trying to find, you know, a way to help out God, to bring God back around instead of having Lucifer be the ruler of heaven. Eh, I mean, wasn't my favorite, but I mean, it kept me entertained. You can read, again, I'll put the Goodreads uh, link down below. You can read my review there, okay? If that's your type of thing, you know, I mean, I want to warn you, it might offend some people. If you're really, really super religious, this could possibly offend you. Okay. I watched the movie Come Back to Me on October the 8th. And that was based on a book by Rath James White. They made it into a movie. And it's about this couple that the woman has the feeling that she has come back to life, that she was dead once. And her neighbor's really creepy, and she suspects her neighbor. And that's what it's basically about. And it's interesting, and I'll tell you what, the ending is just apocalyptic. I mean, if you think about it, that ending was so unsettling. If you watch it and you think back to it, you will be unsettled. I mean, this ending is so... Horrible, <laughs> so to speak. Not horrible because, you know, bad movie horrible, but, but horrible like the situation is horrific. Okay, and it all has to do with this creepy guy next door and people bring being brought back to life. I'll have to read some of Rath James Wright's books. White, not Wright, White. Okay, so on October the 9th, um, I read The Factory of Gore. Okay, now... All of these so far have been part of the 31 Days of Horror, but the Factory of Gore not only is part of that, but it's also part of the Spooky Reading Challenge, where challenge number two says read a book about a monster. And the Factory of Gore is by P.M. Thomas, and I happen to know him, and I've read Zombie Forest by him, and he is a really, really talented author. I totally enjoy The Factory of Gore. Basically, it's about how far a parent will go because of the love for his child, even if his child is this monstrous, has is like a monster, has deformities, has a taste for blood, but the father ends up becoming more the monster, protecting and helping out, you know, his child, who is a literal monster. It's different. I mean, you know, it's more about the love between a father and a son and redemption, towards the end, redemption with the son. Really good book, The Factory of Gore by P.M. Thomas. Part of the Spooky Reading Challenge, read a book about a monster. Okay, on October 10th, I watched the movie Rupture, which was a scary sci-fi because you don't know what the hell is going on in this. Okay, it's like, what in the world? And let me tell you, when it comes around at the end, it, it's scary. Okay, it's rather chilling. Because it's about these aliens. Sort of. 
and they believe that there are others that they can mutate into their kind. And it deals with mind control and your worst fears. And it, it's it's pretty creepy. And it was well acted. Newbie, Newbie Rapace was in it. So, you know, well acted. And then you had um, Peter Stormare in it. I always like him. There was a bunch of Michael Schickless. A bunch of familiar faces in it. Okay, and then again on the 11th, I watched another episode of American Horror Story Cult as part of the 31 Days of Horror. On the 12th, I watched The Midnight Meat Train, which is based on the short story of the same name that was in one of the Books of Blood by Clive Barker. I read the story, and now I watched the movie, and the movie was good. Okay, the movie was really, really good. I like that guy. Uh, what's his name? There's this guy. He's tall and he has black hair and he kind of plays a creepy bad guy and everything. He was like in Lock, Stock and Two, Smoking Barrels and Snatch and all those Guy Ritchie movies. Danged if I can't remember his name, but he was in it. And that part was just meant for him because he is just so... He has such a creepy presence. Alright, and then... On the 13th, I watched a special on YouTube called Witches Night Out. Because I had been thinking about that. I had watched that when I was a little kid. And it was like never out again. And it was this animated show. And I remember really enjoying it. Thinking it was really cute and funny. And I watched it again. And it is really, really clever. And I highly recommend it. Even if it's not Halloween, you should check it out. It's a good movie. Gilda Radner does one of the voices. The animation is really bizarre, but it's about this uh, town, and you've got, like, characters in it called Nicely, Goodly, Rotten, and, you know, some of the, it's really funny. Some of the lines are really funny, and that witch, she's hilarious. She's all depressed because Halloween isn't what it used to be, and she has this magic wand that, like, takes her, instead of riding a, a broom, the magic wand just goes off towards somebody making a wish, and she goes slamming into wherever that is. It's funny, and it has a good message at the end, too. All right, and then on the 14th, I watched the movie The Babysitter on Netflix, and that was a comedy horror, and that was great. Um, it was about this babysitter who is a devil worshiper, and she wanted to use the kid as a sacrifice. And this is how the kid gets out of the situation while all these devil worshippers are in the house, including this really pretty babysitter. And, like, she was being nice to him and being, like, his best friend just to use him for this cult. And I enjoyed it. I didn't think I'd like it, but I really enjoyed it. It was funny. It was entertaining. I wouldn't say it was scary, but it was supposed to be a comedy slash horror. Okay, and then on the 15th, I watched Michael Jackson's video Thriller again. Because, you know, zombies and there's a werewolf in that video. and So, yeah, that was a lot of fun. I enjoyed watching all that dancing of the zombies and everything. That was pretty cool. I had always liked Michael Jackson growing up, and this video was very entertaining, and the dance moves were incredible. So, yeah. So that's part one, okay? Part two, I'll go with what I did on the 16th through the 26th, and then I'll probably have a part three after that to go carry us all the way up to the 31st. All right, that was part one of my October wrap-up. Thanks for stopping by.